After its initial season of victories in the summer and fall of 1861, the tide of the American Civil War turned abruptly against the Southern Confederacy. In February 1862, Union forces in Tennessee, under the unlikely command of a former U.S. Army officer named Ulysses Grant, struck suddenly at the two principal barrier fortifications of the Upper Confederacy at Fort Henry on the Tennessee River and Fort Donelson on the Cumberland River. Both surrendered after little more than token resistance, which opened a river pathway straight into the heart of the western parts of the Confederacy. An attempt by a hastily gathered Confederate army to plug the hole blown in the Confederacy's defenses at the Battle of Shiloh failed, and within weeks the Confederacy's greatest seaport, New Orleans, was captured by the U.S. Navy. At the same time, an immense Union army, Major General George B. McClellan's Army of the Potomac, landed on Virginia's James River Peninsula in a daring Army-Navy combined operation and began slowly steamrolling its way to the outer suburbs of the Confederacy's capital in Richmond. It was at this moment that Confederate President Jefferson Davis turned to Robert E. Lee and, in a dramatic reversal of Confederate fortunes, Lee and his Army of Northern Virginia not only drove McClellan away from Richmond, but bounded northward to defeat another Federal army at the Second Battle of Bull Run, and then leaped across the Potomac River to invade Maryland. Confederate leaders began the Civil War believing that all they would need to secure their independence was a defensive strategy that would simply fend off Union invasions or, at worst, decoy the enemy into the interior and then to cut them off, as were Braddock and Burgoyne. Lee, who had served two tours of duty in New York in the old U.S. Army and knew the power the Northern economy could bring to bear, understood that the Confederacy could not sit on its haunches. I think it all important that we should assume the aggressive, he advised the Confederate leaders, urging a campaign north of the Potomac. A Confederate invasion of the North would trigger a great change in public opinion in the North. Lincoln's Republicans will be destroyed and Northern Democrats acting as the friends of peace will become so strong as that the next administration will go in on that basis. Otherwise, if Confederate armies merely tried to protect their territory, Union armies would simply clamp sieges around their cities, and that would be the end. Follow that course, Lee scolded one of his subordinates, and the result would be but a work of time. Lee's calculated aggressiveness was reinforced, by his chief lieutenant, Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson, who had been badgering Confederate politicians like Alexander R. Boteler to launch Confederate forces northward to the Susquehanna River as early as his celebrated campaign against Union forces in the Shenandoah Valley in the spring of 1862. But when Lee and Jackson invaded Maryland that fall, the results were disappointing, especially after a copy of Lee's campaign orders fell into Union hands, revealing the details of his invasion plans. Cornered by McClellan and the Army of the Potomac at the Antietam Creek in western Maryland, Lee's Army of Northern Virginia survived an all-day hammering and escaped across the Potomac River back into Virginia, but it had been an exceedingly close call. 